Hi, this is Chrissy from Little Indigo Hoops. Uh, this video was put together to go along with the DIY kit that I've put together. If you've received this kit and you're looking at it saying, where's the meadow and how do I make it? There's a specific reason why I don't draw everything on there. You should have a practice hoop and that's where you can get a feel for making the flowers. And then from then on there, everything is freehand. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The reason I do that is because I don't want everybody to have the exact same meadow. I want you to use your imagination and I want you to pick a flower that you like more than the rest and maybe sprinkle those everywhere. Um, you know, I'm hoping that you'll find your creativity and make it uniquely your own. None of my hoops look the same even if I try. Um, it's just not possible. You should just um, poke around the fabric and put flowers wherever you feel like it. Um, sometimes you'll make them big and small and you know sometimes I'll only have one of something in here like I've got this little um, pink grass brush down here but you don't see that anywhere else in the hoop. Um, you know sometimes I'm going across and I have just enough left so I'll pop in a French knot and then tie it off. Um, this is a heart shape one and same thing I just um, well I will purposely start on the outline and then fill down so that I have um, the shape of the heart but otherwise uh, you're just kind of doing your own thing with the meadow and that's completely intentional I do realize though that I left out some information in the instructions I guess it would have been helpful to tell you uh, which things that I do first to make it easier. I did make a note about doing the woven roses and those are the only ones that I drew on there because you do wanna make sure that those are even. So we'll do one together. Um, I like to do these first because you're working on the top side of the fabric. And if you have a lot of other stitching on there already, you, uh, you know, can potentially be getting caught up all the time, so. I usually go ahead and put those on first. Okay, so you're just going to make your five spokes right here. And it's okay if you don't go exactly on the line because this is a heat erasable pen. And once I'm done, I'm just going to wave the hair dryer over it and make everything disappear. Okay, so there you have your five spokes. I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit closer so you can see. So it's gonna look like that, okay? And then you were gonna come up just as close as you can to the center anywhere in between any of the spokes, it does not matter. I usually do my first run under. Oh, I don't like using the hoop stand because I always get caught on everything, but it's hard to videotape otherwise. So under, and then I'm gonna go over, and then under, over, under, Okay, and this is why you always have to have an odd number of these or it would be really strange looking. Um, if you're making, you know, if you move on to other projects of your own and you want to make a bigger woven rose, all you have to do is add more spokes. I think if you did five spokes on a, a rose the size of a quarter, um, it wouldn't really work well. and go around and make your rows.
I'm just going to do the one with you. That way we can move on to the next part. But I would suggest doing all three of your roses first. Just to get those out of the way before you start doing all your other stitching. Oops. I just unthreaded the needle. I'm just going to do one more pass. It's hard to even find the spokes, but I always want to make sure I cover them up really well um, so that they're not sticking out or a weird shape. So the last one, though, sometimes you kind of have to poke it through. Oops. I'm going to use the back side that's not sharp. There we go. Okay, and then when you're finished, you're just going to come back through the fabric. Okay. If I were going to finish this off, which I am in this instance, I would flip it over and I would just run under the existing stitches like this. Just do that once or twice. You can also cut it and knot it, but once I get going, I usually just do this, run them under some stitches and be done with it. Okay. Um, now I have pre-threaded some floss on needles so we can just move right along to the next one. Okay. So here I have, this is the full six strands. So I'm using the larger eye needle and I've already knotted it at the far end. This is the part of the instructions that I sort of skipped over. So you're looking at your picture and it already has stems and flowers and you're thinking, well, how did she get there? Um, this is what I do. Okay, so we already have our rose here, so we're gonna go ahead and give that one a stem. So come up close to the edge, about like a quarter inch, eighth of an inch away. You just wanna do that even around here. And it, you know, but not each stitch has to start close to the bottom. You can start some in the middle, but you do wanna fill in a good amount this way so it gives a good shape. So because we've already put our flower here, we're gonna just come right under the rows, okay? And there you have a stem. It's just one big long stitch. Your fabric is so nice and tight that it's gonna work out fine like that. You don't have to do tiny little back stitches unless you want to, but I don't usually do that. I just do one big stitch. So now you've come up, right, uh, gone down right here, so your needle is nearby. So just pick a spot, go back in, and then come down close to the edge. You can usually feel the inner hoop. That's about the spot where I go into. Okay, I'm doing this sideways because of the hoop stand in the camera setup, so it's not too awkward to watch. Okay, and then I just, and then I'll show you what happens with the, um, you know, I'll give this guy a stem right away. Um, it's hard to do if it already has a stem because, as I said before, when you're working on the top side, you can get caught up, but I think I can manage just for this. So I'm just going to keep going like this and work your way across the hoop. I know it looks completely random. Um, and a little bit of it is random, but when you fill it in, it's just going to look really nice. You just have to be patient. I caught the back side of that. Okay. Well, let's see. I know I'm going to want to flower this far over, so I might just plan this one a little bit better and come up there to the edge. The only time I really do much planning is if I'm at the edge of the hoop or near the words because I want them spaced a certain way. Okay, so you've got that. I still have floss on my needle, so I just keep going until I run out. I'll make them a little bit shorter. I might make it close to another one like this. Come real close to the bottom like that. And then I have this big open space because I did these ones leaning. So I'm going to put one here and 
that's about how much I have left right now. So at, at about that point, I will finish it off. So I'm going to spin this around again so we can see the back. And for this situation, I am going to knot it off because I don't think it will be very tight under these. Um, so you tie your knot and then take your needle and put it right at the base where your floss came up and that will bring the knot right down for you. And that's good. Clip it and you're done. Um, this is all the jumping around that I do. This is the reason why I double up the fabric so that you're not seeing everything through the other side. Okay, so there you go. That's one pass of stems. Then I will pick up a color and I have this very light purple. In this one here, I did, I split the floss. So this is just three strands and I have the smaller needle. Okay, so I will just start here and come up. It's really hard to see. And I go, you can go in right at the top of the stem or you can go in just above it. I usually go just above it to, um, I don't know, if I need to give it more height. So, so I would just keep doing that. And you have the practice hoop where they were drawn out for you. Um, that's just to get you started. So now you should be able to do them freehand. There should be extra fabric if you don't feel confident and you want to practice a little bit more. It's completely plain and you can try them out. If you feel like it, I mean, you could draw them on here, but I don't really think that you need to. Okay, so there's that one. And then, you know, if there's a big space, I might toss in a French knot while I'm moving over. One, two, three. Make sure you hold that piece tightly until going in. You want to have that tension on there um, to make the knot nice and tight. Otherwise, it will be loose and floppy. And I just do another. I like them to have a little petal sticking off to the side, so sometimes I'll throw out a little, little side one there, just flipping out. Okay, and then again, I might throw in. French knot. I think I did four. One, two, three. I mean, you can do four, but I usually stop at three. Okay. Um, you can also make flower wherever the heck you want, even if there's no stem there yet. Maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to want a little bit more purple here. And you can go ahead and make a flower. One, I'm just going to put three and then I'm going to come back up to this one and maybe maybe we'll, this guy will get five or seven Do them tight together like that. It kind of looks like it hasn't bloomed yet, which is nice. Okay. the way this one looks because the outside petals are longer than the inside petals. So then I'm just going to come and add another one to 
change the size of it. Okay, and another one just here. I have enough to do one more. I'm going to put one right here. Just the other end of the thread was really short. I wanted to make sure it didn't come out of the needle, so that's what I was just doing. Okay, so I don't really have much left for purple floss, so I'm going to flip this over. Okay, and now we have a lot of stitches here, so I will just run it under a bunch like that and I will come through again I don't want that one and just snip that off okay. now you'll notice there are more stems than there are flowers and that is completely fine so now I have another piece for stems. I like to alternate. I, I do uh, stems, flowers, stems, flowers, and eventually they all get filled in. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes you'll just have a stem and that's fine. So this one is already knotted and I'm ready to go. Um, this side has extra already because I went all the way across and came back. So I'm going to start on this side and put a little short one here so that I can fill in that space later with the small flower. Okay, and then up, oh, just up and down. That's it. If you want, you can give this French knot a stem. A lot of them just float around the hoop. And I think this one needs a, a stem. So if you've already made the flower and you don't have a stem, I just come up and slide my needle right through the stitches. There you go. That's all there is to it. I think we need something taller here. Like that. And what will eventually happen is you'll have a few layers and you will have a flower that you'll put a stem over. Um, and that's fine. I mean, you have to think about what you're gonna see in nature you know, some some of them are going to get blocked out, and that's that's what we're doing here. We're making layers of oops, I took the needle out. Making layers of flowers. Let's come back up here. And I think one more right there. Okay, and I'll flip this over. And I think this one I'm going to tie because it's hard to get under those stitches at the bottom of the hoop. So I'm just going to use the needle to guide the knot down to the bottom. And that's it. I will do, let's do one more flower. About some yellow. So I usually just do wrist to shoulder. All the stuff you have should be pre-cut, but if you wanted to cut some on your own down the road, I do wrist to shoulder. Um, any more than that, you can get really tangled up. Thread that, put 
a knot at the bottom. Knots can be tricky sometimes. Um, if I'm doing lettering and stuff, sometimes I will um, not knot it and hold the floss down the back with the first few stitches. It takes a little bit more time, but sometimes when you're stitching and you're trying to go back down the same hole that you started, um, the knot gets in the way. I've had that happen a few times, so that's one reason why some people don't knot them. Okay, so I've got this pretty yellow. I think I'm going to start right here. And I am going to do a few flowers right down the stem. So I'm going to do these tiny short ones. Just like three little petals. Actually, it looks good with just the two. And then I'm going to move right down the stem. Now, because I've got the stem here already, I'm just going to like put it right underneath where that might be. Just like that. And this one is going to get the third one. I think it needs it. If you're looking for more inspiration for where to put flowers and different types and variations, I do have lots of examples on my Instagram account. And that's Little Indigo Hoops. I actually... <laughs> go to my own work for inspiration sometimes. I'm thinking, oh, I need another flower. What haven't I done in a while? And I'll go look at the hoops that I've done um, and, and kind of scan through all of them. And sometimes I forget about certain flowers. Okay, so there we go. We've got those little guys there. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'll show you a few flowers. I'm gonna grab some pink. Sorry, I just didn't have this one ready to go. Okay, so I have this hoop here and I'm gonna make this flower here, which um, it is on your practice hoop, but this just has less, um, less petals on it. So it's kind of a star and I'm gonna go right to the edge Oops. Okay, so if your floss knots up like this, don't pull it right away. First, put your needle through there and just kind of loosen it and then gently pull it apart. that is running around under my feet so I'm hoping she's not going to jump up here oh actually I like the shape of that one too I mean that would be a nice looking flower too but since I said I would do the star shape one I will keep going sometimes you'll just be stitching and say oh I like that and leave it just the way it is
You don't always have to go back through the middle hole. You can just go right in between some other pieces. Sometimes it gets a little bit hard to keep going because you've already put so many stitches through that one hole. So sometimes I'll just go right up as close as I can next to the hole, the center, go down that way. Okay, so there we go. We've got a pretty little flower there. And I'm just thinking about this one is going to have a stem down. So where will I want to put the next one? Maybe a little bit smaller, but similar. So... Okay, and then after this I think we'll stop. She caught my floss and she made a mess out of it. I try not to stitch around the caps, you know? I get into everything. This is causing it to knot up. Okay. But you know what? I just want one more petal. So sometimes I just take a look back add it and see if it's done and sometimes add something extra okay so there we're gonna stop there Oops. try to bring it up closer to the camera okay. so there you have your woven rose some cone flowers french knot i don't have a name for those and um, these guys here, I feel like they look like chrysanthemums. Uh, so that's what you're going to do. You're just going to do a pass of stems, and then come across with the flowers, and then you're going to do another pass of stems, and then come across with flowers, and then eventually your hoop will look like this. Okay. Um, there should be plenty of floss in there. To fill in afterwards too you know sometimes I stick a little French knot or just a stitch here and there if there's a little bit of white space um, so I hope that you found this helpful